What's going on? Eddie here with Guitar Mastery Method, and today we're going to talk about the building blocks of what makes up a great rhythm guitarist. Just be sure to stick around till the end of the lesson because I've got a free gift for you and your guitar that you're both going to love. Now I love playing rhythm guitar. It's actually one of my favorite things to do on guitar. And it's something that I will always put first as far as like having that overall sensibility when it comes to the way I play. Because to me, rhythm guitar is not just a singular kind of uh, uh, box to put yourself in, right? Like, you know, I know guitar players who call themselves rhythm guitarists or lead guitarists, right? I look at those as temporary roles that are based on whatever your musical situation is. So there have been times where in bands, I'm a lead guitarist, and then there are times where I'm a rhythm guitarist. Or even times in the same band, during the same set, I'm handling rhythm for any particular time in a particular song, and then in another song, I'm handling lead. So it's really just like a dynamic, just kind of case-by-case -case sort of situation. But having a sense of rhythm, like rhythm being one of the pillars of music, you know, next to uh, melody and harmony, Rhythm is one of those things that it should bleed over into everything you do, and that includes when you're playing lead guitar. Because to be honest, when I see lead guitarists really chop out and just are really, you know, have impressive technique, but their sense of rhythm is lacking, to me it kind of ruins the whole thing. Having a good sense of timing and having great technique when it comes to leads is a winning combination, believe me. So all that's to say is don't neglect putting time into your sense of rhythm. So let's talk about what goes into being a great rhythm guitar player. The first thing is, it's really actually pretty simple. Like, you don't have to check a whole lot of boxes to consider yourself a great rhythm player. There's just certain fundamentals that are pretty much going to set you up for it. You want to think of it that way. So the first thing is, as far as what chords you know, right? If you know all your open chords and you're familiar with your bar chord shapes, that is more than enough to get you not only started, but it's really what you're going to spend most of your time doing. Unless you're trying to straight, you know, comp jazz stuff, right? Which is not really my bag, as much as I love that style of playing. You know, I find that in the, the years and years, I mean, almost two decades of being a working musician, really, it comes down to just the basics, right? It's just basic, you know, from open chords to bar chords, and just understanding those shapes on the fretboard and just being comfortable with them is really all it takes. And, of course, power chords included. So, it's just one of those things where you don't necessarily have to have a vast library of like, you know, intricate chord voicings and, and triads and stuff like that. If you got your basic, you know, uh, bar chord shapes and your open chords down, like you can pretty much handle most of popular music. And rhythm guitar isn't just about playing the chords, it's about how you play them, right? And that's what we're gonna get into with the next most important thing, as far as the fundamental to being a great rhythm guitar player. I would say this is the most important thing, it's your picking hand, right? As a rhythm guitar player, or just if you're in the role of playing rhythm guitar, especially if it's one of those situations where maybe you don't have a drummer, right? If you notice bluegrass, bluegrass groups don't tend to have drummers, right? They, but they keep time so well. You'll have like an acoustic guitar player, a mandolin player, an upright bass player, and a, like a fiddle player, right? If it's like a quartet or something. They won't have a drummer, but man, will they just be like just chanking those chords and it, it, like the, the pocket is just deep and they don't need a drummer, right? And it's not to say that drummers aren't important, of course they are, but what I'm saying is when it comes to rhythm, your right hand or your picking hand, right, whether it's your right or your left hand, that's got to be your own drummer, right? That's your own timekeeper that you have to train and you got to get, you know, to the point where it's competent enough to be able to handle a multitude of different tempos and different rhythmic styles. And even if that sounds like a lot, it's really not. It's just like thinking about basic beats, right, that you hear in hundreds and hundreds of songs. And you just want to kind of have that sort of pulse just like right there inhabiting your picking hand so that's just carrying you through. So if you're trying to, let's say, establish a beat, let's just say, right, we're going to just take some simple chords. Let's take the B minor bar chord here. Let's say the open A chord and the G chord. Real simple, right? We're just keeping it simple. So it's a combination of bar chords and open chords. Those are going to be what we were working with. And what we're going to do is we're going to explore different ways that our picking hand, right, our, our own personal timekeeper slash drummer, right, is uh, actually able to establish different types of rhythm, even if we're just playing those same kind of chords. So let's take a basic kind of uh, slow, like low tempo kind of beat. Maybe something like, like if I were to just... Think of something like, you know, 
something like that, right? Like kind of kind of like a slow driving kind of rock sound, but it's like it's like slow tempo, right? So So if you want to establish a beat using your picking hand, mute your strings, and we're just going to treat the thicker strings, right, like they're the kick drum, and the thinner strings like they're the snare. All right, so th these strings are our drum kit now. And so we're going to try and get this percussive thing going where we can just get into this groove and just keep it going with our picking hand. So if we were to do a slow, like soft rock kind of beat, something like... And it doesn't have to be exact, right? Because we're only dealing with a kick and a snare, right? So, like, if you're trying to do cymbals and all that stuff, like, you know, just don't worry so much about that. You just want to keep the, the fundamental steady pulse of the overall beat. So, like... And if I want to just start throwing in chords, right? Start with that B minor. Or you had to even out a little bit. So something like that, when you're when you're playing that chord, right? This B minor bar chord, we're still kind of treating like the the lower strings like they're the kick drum, and the higher strings like they're the like they're the snare, right? So it's like so it's like we're we're accenting those higher strings as if it's a snare hit, even though we're we're just keeping that shape with the uh, with the bar chord, you know. And kind of in between those those stabs on those higher strings, I'm just keeping that keeping that rhythm going. And as a great exercise that I invite you to do is when you establish a beat and you give yourself a handful of chords, right, to work with. This is just just for fun, you know. This is completely like off the cuff, kind of. Um, uh, you can you can even inspire some original musical ideas. You know, obviously learning songs and stuff absolutely helps because it'll introduce you to different kind of rhythmic patterns. But in, in a way where you're trying to like really just you know figure it out for yourself and like discover it, you know, and, and even, you know, at the same time as an added benefit, come up with an original idea, just give yourself some chords to work with, keep that beat going and don't stop, right? Even if you stumble, because you're going to, it, when you're, when you're practicing something new, like, you know, it's not going to be perfect and that's fine. It's not about being perfect. It's about working towards that goal of just like having that beat and letting it just, just maintaining it, right? If I want to change chords, and you, can, I mean, like I could just do that all day, like just keeping that rhythm. And I mean, like I said, it's not going to be perfect in the beginning, but but you want to tell yourself just to keep that rhythm going. And if you if you find yourself losing track of the rhythm, just stop for a second and then get right back on that horse and then just keep it going. And then what that's going to do is it's actually going to build a synchronization between your picking hand and your fretting hand, especially which is really important when it comes to rhythm because there's a lot of dynamics going on here, right? Even though we're just using a really simple three chord kind of arrangement here, each chord, right, is is carrying through that beat, right, where we're treating the lower notes and the higher notes as like their own kind of accent, right? Keeping that pulse going. Let's change the beat and use the same chords and just to show you how diverse this, this thing can really get. So let's say if we were to do um, maybe something a little faster. Let's see, something like... Something like that, right? So it's like we just completely changed the vibe while keeping the chords exactly the same. Or let's say you wanted to do like a rock, like a driving rock, like Foo Fighters style thing, and you could just turn the chords into power chords, you know? So something like.
You know, so by taking those same chords and applying a completely different vibe to them, it's like we're doing a fresh new idea each time and it's all in our picking hand, right? Our fretting hand is pretty much sticking to the script the whole time with those same three chords. This is just to demonstrate how that picking hand, like, you know, having that kind of drummer dynamic and focusing on different kinds of, you know, or like trying out different kinds of rhythm, rhythmic patterns and strumming patterns, dynamics, you know, things like palm muting or like just anything to sort of keep a, a, a relative beat going, you can completely change the way you play those same exact chords. This is especially useful if you're going to be jamming with a buddy and it's just two of y'all with your guitars and, you know, no backing tracks, no drum machine, nothing like that. Let's just say it's just purely organic, right? And one of you is going to take rhythm. You want to make sure that you lay it down, right? You got, you got to, you got to keep that vibe going, especially so if your buddy's playing lead, you know, before it's your turn, you want to, you want to make them like find a good feel behind it, right? And generally, in my, in my experience, I get the most inspired playing lead if there's some great rhythm going on underneath it. So if we were to even shake up the example, right? Like, a, like if we were to take like a kind of like an A blues sort of thing, you know? Like that idea, but just really make it way cooler with different kinds of beats, you know? Taking that same thing, right? That, ca that open cowboy kind of blues thing. You know, if you were to do it in a straight beat like that, you know? That's one way, but then you can do something like this, like... I just had to throw in that. I just, I don't know, that just felt right in the moment, you know? Immediately, when I changed, when I changed the rhythm, which was just in my picking hand, right? Freddie hand was doing the same exact scene, the same exact, bleh, same exact thing, and I was just inspired, and I just had to throw in that. Or even if you wanted to get a little busier and do kind of like a jump blues thing, you know? Right? Same thing that our fretting hand is doing. Same thing that's been doing the whole time. We're just changing up the vibe completely with our picking hand. That is how powerful a good sense of rhythm is. Oh, and hey, real quick, if you're getting value out of this lesson, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. It'll really help us out and let us know that you want to see more lessons just like this one, which we'd be more than happy to give you. So thanks in advance, and let's get right back to it. So now let's actually explore some strumming patterns together that we can liken to a beat and just try it out with either some open chords or even like the cowboy blues thing just to kind of see what sort of works. If we were to take a very common strumming pattern, something like down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, right? So it's just down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, just repeat it. Down, down, up, down, 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 up. And when you're learning this and doing it, uh, if you say out loud, you know, the direction that you're going, it just kind of helps you memorize it so that if you're wondering, am I supposed to be up or down? You just go down, 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 up, down, 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 up, right? Even doing it with no strings at first just to get kind of the, the motion correct, right? Get loosey-goosey with it. And then once you're interacting with the strings, you want to keep it going. You know, down, 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 up, down, 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 up. So something like this, I feel like the chords would work. So let, let's go back to that B minor. A and a G chords, right? Which, by the way, we don't have to use all three of those. We can use just one, two of the three, or all three. It really doesn't matter. You know, this is whatever you feel inspired to do. That's just a little framework to start with. And I'm actually going to switch off the bridge pickup. Something like this, I feel like it needs to be a little more jangly. So I'm going to do middle position here. By the way, tone is very important when it comes to rhythm guitar. You know, of course, depending on what you're doing, stylistically, but like, you don't want to use like a super saturated like lead guitar tone with lots of delay, for example, as your rhythm tone. You want the rhythm tone to be like, you know, dry, uh, generally like not washed in time-based effects like reverb and delay, usually. I mean, sometimes, uh, you know, like it, it obviously depends. If you're playing rockabilly, you're going to want slapback delay, that, that kind of thing. So, of course, it's case by case, but like with rhythm guitar, uh, especially when it comes to the amount of gain that you're using, you want more of a cleanish kind of sound, especially in the examples we're doing here. Just like, a, or even like an edge of breakup sound, which is kind of what I have, where it's like, when you play softly, it's pristine, you know, but you dig in, it gets louder and more saturated, right? So there's a whole, there's a really nice, you know, spectrum of like tone that I have available 
at my fingertips here. So like having that kind of edge of breakup tone is nice. So so let's let's do this. So down, 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 up, down, down, down. Up. Something interesting happened there. So I, I decided to just like find the groove and just kind of keep it going, right? I felt inspired in the moment to throw in an extra chord. So I cheated a little bit, but I really wanted to hear that E minor chord thrown in. So let's just add that to the mix because why not? It worked, it sounded great. It inspired me, right? Which I'm using myself as the guinea pig here just to kind of show you in real time how when you're practicing something like this, even though it was pretty simple, I, I was being wide open with it, not super dynamic, but it did start to settle into a sound. And I was like, I like this, you know, this. And kind of like how I went straight to the G rather than playing the A, right? I went, because when you're playing G next to B minor, it's a really good, you know, movement of chords. And then I just, oof, that E minor was just calling to me, you know? But I wouldn't have thought to throw that in there, or I wouldn't have been inspired to throw that in there had I not kind of, you know, got the ball rolling by starting with that beat. Right, and then just like getting, like getting the feel of it after a while. And sometimes that takes a little bit. Uh, even for me, like, like there are times where like I'll just need to do a few more, you know, go arounds uh, with that beat and then I'll finally settle into it, I'll feel more relaxed and then that's when the ideas really start flowing. And of course, like, you know, if this is something like, you know, this approach is a little bit new to you, in the beginning it's gonna feel a little tense and you're gonna be like thinking a lot because you gotta be monitoring, you know, what your hand is doing or what both hands are doing, keeping the, you know, keeping the beat and everything like that. So just understand that that's all right, that's part of the process. The goal is to get more and more comfortable, more and more steady with it. And then over time it becomes really natural and it'll start feeling really good. And then when you're not thinking as much, that's when the creative brain can start to take over. And then the ideas can start coming out. And it doesn't have to be a complicated set of chords, right? We just use these simple chords, B minor, A, G, and E minor. And just found an order that just really worked. And it especially worked with that beat, at least in my opinion it did. Let's explore another beat. So something like, so it's, down, 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 up, down, up, down, down. 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 All right, so when you kind of like, again, like us out loud, say it out loud as far as what your movement is, it'll help help you remember what you're supposed to be doing, right? Uh, so with that beat, I'm gonna start throwing in the chords now. Okay, so right there, I, once I settled into it, then it just started feeling natural and I just stayed within those four chords or the three plus the bonus chord that we've been throwing in because it just works so well in my opinion, especially when we're, you know, focusing on the tonality of that B minor chord. You know, the other chords just dance around it beautifully, you know. And I mean, it just works when we're just going through this different kind of rhythmic pattern, right, with our picking hand, having that drummer dynamic. And again, it's not about perfection really or precision. It's really just about the vibe, at least in the beginning when you're getting used to that, right? So if, for example, if we were jamming, you and I right now, and you wanted me to take rhythm, I would wanna make sure that whatever I play feels good to you. 
So if we were to do something like, let's say, uh, maybe I had an acoustic guitar and I was playing those, you know, because it's a very, the patterns we've been going over have been very acoustic-y, strummy kind of patterns. And if you were to take lead, like playing B minor pentatonic over that, you know, I want to make sure that the rhythm that I'm playing is inspiring better melodic ideas to come out of your hands when you're playing lead. And that's kind of the give and take when it comes to playing in a, with a combination of musicians. And of course, that expands even further out when you're dealing with an entire band. And when you're working this technique, don't worry so much about getting fancy with embellishments or even throwing in like little leads and stuff. I know like combining rhythm and lead guitar is a lot of fun, but for something like this, it's really all about establishing that picking hand to where you can establish a beat confidently and especially like without a metronome, like in the beginning, you're gonna, you know, having a metronome be really helpful, but you wanna get to the point where you can just tap your foot or bob your head, like it just makes you move. And then you're just, you're now in this, you're, you're locked in in this groove and then whoever's playing with you gets locked in as well. And what will be really helpful to kind of give you an arsenal of different uh, strumming patterns and different beats to work with is just listen to your favorite songs. And like when you're listening to them, just have your guitar in your hands, mute the strings, and just try to find the beat with your picking hand, you know, whatever song you're listening to. And if you find something that feels good, then, you know, turn off the record and then keep that beat going and then throw some chords on it and see what you come up with. And another thing you can do is just find a drum loop and just let that play and then just try to find a beat on top of it, you know? So you can, you can let like an actual like drum loop inspire you as far as like figuring out how in like kind of thinking about the kick snare pattern, hearing that and then just focusing on that when you're trying to find that beat with your picking hand. Once you've established the beat, turn that off and then start playing something. And then it's just gonna be all on you. You're gonna be locked in, keeping the groove and coming up with some pretty cool stuff. So now you know that what it takes to be a great rhythm guitarist isn't having a vast library of chords at your disposal. Of course, that's, that always helps and knowing more is always gonna be a net positive, right? But just by knowing your open chords and basic bar chords, I mean, there's a whole lot that you can cover when it comes to playing rhythm guitar, especially when you're playing popular Western music. The thing that's most important is this, your picking hand, your own personal timekeeper. Even if you were playing with a drummer, Obviously you wanna be locked in at the tempo that the drummer has established, but you can of course keep a beat and even add on to the beat based on the way that you play your own rhythm, right? You can add some extra percussive elements to it, you know, that's kind of where it gets fun, you know, especially when like, you know, when I, sometimes I like to play with the drummer friend, just me and drums, like guitar and drums, no bass, no keys, nothing like that. Not because we don't love that, obviously that would be very helpful to have on hand all the time, but when I'm practicing with it's just a drummer buddy, uh, I, tr I really get a lot of inspiration strictly from the beat, where there's no actual tonality or, or a melody established or harmony or anything from, you know, let's say a bass player or a guitar player. They don't establish anything uh, melodically for me or just as far as, you know, what actually like a pitched, you know, instrument would play. So I just like listen to the drums and then I just, I just start, I just listen, I vibe out to it and then I start to think, okay, I can hear something happening. Let me, let me, uh, let's bring it out and let's and see what happens, you know? And th that, that's one of my favorite things to do when it's just jamming, you know, with another musician friend is just like having a, like a beat established, getting inspired by that, and then just coming up with the original ideas. And then at some point you become this like rhythm engine where you can just come up with all kinds of different rhythms. And you even have like, you know, in your back pocket, rather than a, a library of a bunch of different chord voicings, it's like you have a bunch of different beats that you can pull out whether you're doing a blues jam or a rock jam or a country jam, you'll know exactly what to do. Now remember when I said that your sense of rhythm impacts how you play lead guitar, right? That's absolutely true. Having a good sense of timing and a good sense of rhythm can really show up in the way that you play leads. Now we didn't focus on lead guitar in this lesson, but don't worry, I got you covered. Remember that free gift? Here it is. This is my fretboard conveyor belt system and it's the perfect foot in the door to get you going with lead guitar. This system was developed over years of frustration, but it has helped thousands of guitar players online learn how to play solos confidently and comfortably all over that fretboard. And you're getting your own copy absolutely free. Just be sure to click the link here or check the link in the description box. Whenever I'm asked if I'm a rhythm or lead guitarist, I tell them I'm just a guitarist. I'll play rhythm when I have to and I'll play lead when I have to. And I invite you to think in the same way. You wanna be able to just do what you gotta do as a guitar player without pigeonholing yourself to a very specific role. Because at the end of the day, that just limits you. 